Originally released in 2003, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom was a game of a completely different era. A time where video games would funnel games based on TV shows and movies time and time again. What made it stand out was its attention to detail for the love of the show and its gameplay being fairly okay, though nothing truly that remarkable, just better than the bar set by other tie-in games. Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated looks to cash in on the nostalgia while updating the look of the game and keeping its mechanics the same, for better and for worse. Plankton is once again up to no good, trying to take over the town of Bikini Bottom only now with robots. The evil genius quickly realizes he's made a mistake though when he discovers that the robot making machine was set to not obey. With a bunch of evil robots now on the loose and with no control over them, it's up to the familiar faces of Spongebob, Patrick, and Sandy to take down the robots and save the day. While the premise seems completely chaotic, it's definitely up to par with Spongebob humor and it works because of it. Battle for Bikini Bottom leans into Spongebob's foundation and it's better because of it. In fact, I'm not sure if this game would even stand up in 2020 in any shape or form if it didn't have the Spongebob foundation in the first place. While it's not going to win a story writing award anytime soon, I acknowledge that this game dives into its nostalgia of familiar one-liners, setting references, and so much more. The end result is something that feels familiar, fun, and nostalgic. At its heart, Battle for Bikini Bottom is a collectathon 3D platformer like many of the games released during the Nintendo 64 era. Starting off at SpongeBob's home, we're tasked with collecting shiny objects and golden spatulas. Shiny objects are found just about everywhere from in homes, in levels, and even in enemy robots. They are a currency in the game that can be used to unlock new routes and levels or buy golden spatulas from Plankton or Mr. Krabs. Golden spatulas, on the other hand, are the real treasure. These open up new levels for you to explore and thus give you more spatulas to collect. These levels look straight out of the TV show. Just how it was exciting to see the town of South Park recreated in The Stick of Truth, it's astonishing to see the town of Bikini Bottom fully imagined in 3D. Suddenly I knew where everything was in comparison to something like SpongeBob's house. Now these levels act almost like hub worlds that feature a handful of quests for you to complete in return for a golden spatula. Different quests also require different characters. Luckily, you can swap between playable characters at the local bus stop. Each of the trio features a unique ability that makes them better suited for certain puzzles. SpongeBob excels at hitting objects above his head, Sandy can hover with the help of her lasso, and Patrick can throw objects at a distance. Having to switch between all three periodically help keep the even very basic gameplay a little fresh. While there's been countless debates from what I've read from those excited for this game, this isn't necessarily a remake or a remaster. It's somewhere in the middle. A remaster usually updates the resolution of a game, maybe runs it at a better frame rate. A remake typically recreates the game's assets, tweaks the gameplay, and recreates the original game under a new vision. Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated recreates the visual assets to be more in line with modern games, adds in some cut content, but doesn't tweak any of the gameplay mechanics to feel modern gameplay-wise. To this new game's credit, there is a new multiplayer horde mode that technically is new, but is by far the most bare-bones feeling mode in this entire package. Robot enemies come in waves as you and a friend take them down one by one. Sadly, the setting for this mode isn't as memorable as the rest of the campaign though, and thus easily becomes forgettable behind its shallow experience. Battle for Bikini Bottom has gotten quite the makeover in Rehydrated. Like the Spyro and Crash Collection remakes, Rehydrated gets a visual rehaul to look much more up to par with modern standards. The textures of the grass, the character models, and the overall color palette has been vastly improved. The new one looks beautiful in comparison to the original. Even playing on something like my Nintendo Switch, the visuals look great for what the game is. I wish I could say the same for its performance though. At least when playing on the Nintendo Switch version, I came across some lengthy loading screens, constant popping, and frame rate tips when areas would first start to load in. PS4 and Xbox one both bump up the resolution to 1080p and 4k on the pro model consoles, ultimately proving to be the best way to play this remake if you choose to do so. If playing on the go is your primary concern though, you're probably going to need to deal with a bit more technical hiccups on the Switch. All the voice actors from the original game are here, which is to say a lot of the original voice cast is here. It's impressive really. Spongebob, Sandy, Patrick, and Mrs. Puff all sound like they do in the show. The problem with that is that Mr. Krabs and Mermaid Man stick out like sore thumbs as their original voice actors didn't reprise their roles, neither in the original or this one. It's off-putting to hear them talk, to say the least. The rest of the environment sounds authentic to the world of Spongebob, with songs from the show looping on end. Sadly, they do get a bit repetitive after a while, but they do their job of setting the backdrop. Throughout the game, playing characters will say some pretty funny one-liners that take into account who you're playing as. SpongeBob, for example, collects his underwear for health, and will talk about how he loves wearing four pairs of underwear. While playing as Patrick, however, he exclaims that he doesn't think SpongeBob's underwear fits quite right. These moments were great up until they kept repeating over and over again. Lines also tend to overlap to the point that they queue up and play over the wrong action. Some new lines to add some variety to the humor would have been great. Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated is a fun nostalgia trip that doesn't last for very long. Sort of how I used to really love the Sonic Adventure series, but the more I played them recently, the more flaws I discovered, I feel the same way about Battle for Bikini Bottom, but to a higher degree. 
It's great to see the visual upgrade here because the difference is night and day. However, I wish that the reimagining also included gameplay design as the basic platforming has only gotten staler with age. If you love Spongebob and have a soft spot for the series, I'm sure this will get you the smile, but the nostalgia can hold up my entertainment for very long. It's faithful to the original in the sense that it's a friendly basic platformer, but as someone attached to the show more than the original game, it didn't get me too invested. 